Marado Shapranda Kala Pratesa Debakata Shakataka Tepakata Prodosoto. Listen, listen. Under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have, should God at any point be second place in your life. That's what must happen to you first. You must experience it so that when you get someone born again, you know what the person should become like. When you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion, you know the job has not finished. You should draw them to a point where it eats them up. It's called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can stay 10 years. How many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care? How many wives whose husbands are not saved? How many children whose parents are not saved? Look at me. Over 90%, if not everyone, if not everyone, including myself, you look at your immediate family or your extended family, you will find people who you know are on their way to hell. It's a highway to hell. Are we together now? Yeah. I know that you hear people say this emotionally, just preaching evangelism. But I want to tell you something. I don't mean to scare you, but I want to seriously tell you. There is a real place called hell. There is a real place today like this called hell. Are we together? The Bible says, and books were open. Listen to me. Books were open. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Hear what the Bible says. Whosoever's name was not found written thereof. The Bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere. He was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. Listen carefully. It says afterwards the judgment. It didn't say after that a celebration. It is appointed unto man. You see, in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me, please listen carefully. I have had the opportunity to be at several funerals. I've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people I knew were once alive, now dead. At that point, brothers and sisters, please look at me. Whether you have a PhD, listen please. Whether you had a first class, are we together? No matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you have gone to. At in five minutes, not breathing, it becomes useless. Has it occurred to you? I can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and I'm gone. This body lies lifeless. You will wake it, you will pray on it, you will prophesy on it, you will pour oil on it. The body lies down lifeless. What does that tell you? It tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal. Listen, listen, listen. Seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive. So if I give somebody school fees, that's good. He's going to school. If you say you want to marry and I give you 500,000 to help you and marry, you will like me. You will be very happy. But the moment your body, this body you are seeing, can no longer host your spirit, everything becomes useless. Jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man, um, Lazarus and a rich man. Do you still study your Bible? Or the job took it away there was a man who the Bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was Lazarus I'm not talking of poverty and prosperity I'm talking of two people are we together now the Bible tells us 
that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you're about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you're about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured did you hear what i said every other thing in life hear me please every other thing in life i don't care what it is is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved and then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry but my concern listen my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life listen as it is knowing that this person died in Christ you can die in money where are you going mention it you can die in education where are you going to you can die in politics where are you going to die in an aircraft the only 
ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be die in Christ it's not that you die in what you can die in worry it's still hell you can die in stress it's still hell please hear what I am saying you see people dying all the time and we keep watching them there are people today every time you think of you know right now based on the Bible except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the Bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in Christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind I'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place is your father born again if you hear right now look at me listen wherever your father is if you hear right now that he drops dead will you rejoice will you cry in joy or will you cry in grief if you hear that your mother has gone to be with the lord will you rejoice will you cry in joy or cry in grief what of your room seriously you will always come for koinonia you will always go to churches and do a lot of things but are you saved it's a very serious question that you are working for God does not mean you are saved that you have a Christian name Joshua Jesus our salvation no 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 As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people, sadly speaking, we are just shopping for larger congregations. Now, of course, it should culminate into church growth. But the foundation, listen, is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness. Do you know I can get this brother saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, loving the Lord, and as I've gotten him saved, I've gotten 200 other people saved in him. Are we together? Because this person now will take those values. Look how some of you, a few of you that have really participated in soul winning, look what has happened through your life to others. I'll never forget one of our ladies years ago. She might be streaming following right now. And um, her entire family, they were not born again. None of them was saved. Then she got born again and God granted her grace 
I think her younger brother or so got born again. And then eventually, you know, she kept pressing passionately and intentionally. The mom now got born again. It was left the father alone. That man refused and said, no way, you will not get born again. I know if you ask her what she wanted God to do in her family, it's not to build a house. It's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point. She just wanted everyone to be saved. I remember very clearly, like yesterday, the day her dad was saved. When her father was saved, she called me crying. We met around then in the campus chapel. And she said, look, her whole family had been saved. Do you know, when he was saved, his family members had to drive to his place. And they say, which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to Jesus? If his finances, we can sort it out. And the man got saved under living faith. So that, 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 that fire has come to stay. The joy of salvation. When we give them... and we say praise the lord i built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone got saved we just clap a hand please go and sit down because of our priority our priority i've seen a few people that have trusted god to be saved get saved and i've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it i challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child who insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them